Today is November 2nd, 2024, and for a few hours last night, it seems that OpenAI's O1 model, the full O1, not O1 Mini, not O1 Preview, was available for a brief window of time in the AM on the west coast of the United States, where I'm at right now, actually in San Francisco at the moment, at my parents' place, and I had a chance to prompt it a few times before it was taken down. I'll put some timestamps below in the description if you want to just skip around. But basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some clips of me prompting it and showing you what it looked like. So anyways, here is the uh, video. I've kind of compiled some clips together. First thing I asked it was just when was its last knowledge update? And it says here it was October 2023. Um, this is the, well, that was the Twitter sort of leak where people said, hey, just click this link and now you can use it. Uh, that apparently doesn't work anymore, but moving on here, again, it doesn't also tell you what model it really is using. So when you click that link that says model 01 right there, just says chat GPT. I'm here, I'm just testing it with the black hole image of M87 from 2019. You can see here it's thinking, it's using chain of thought, which you couldn't do with 01 mini or 01 preview. And indeed it does get this picture correct here. So that was pretty interesting. But what I did do is that I decided next to give it questions from the Putnam Math Competition last year in 2023. Now, again, this is a competition that is exclusively taken by math majors across colleges in the United States and Canada, I think, and the average score is like zero. So this is a very hard exam. The best college students in the world try and take it. And so I gave the... O1 model, or the, the supposed O1 model, the first three questions of the exam. So what I'm doing here is I have a screenshot of the first question from the Putnam exam, and I'm dropping it into the context window, and you can see it's thinking about how to solve this problem. It's the first question on the exam, and I believe it did it in like 18 seconds, which I did do this test with O1 preview in a previous live stream, and I'm pretty sure it did it uh, it took a lot longer than 18 seconds, but I could be wrong, but I don't remember it doing it um, that quickly here. So uh, it's thinking, and I'm just going to go ahead and skip ahead just to give you the answer. So indeed, it gets n equals 18, which was indeed the answer to the the actual test. So I think I'm going to show the the solution, perhaps, or maybe not. Okay, I guess maybe I just went right to... Um, the next question here. Nevertheless, next question, again, from the Putnam exam. Okay, so I think the second question, it took some more time to uh, think about here. And uh, the answer is plus or minus one over n factorial based on the solutions from the uh, Putnam archive. So, sorry, I'm skipping ahead here. I just don't want to spend all the time just talking about it. But it thought for a while, and then eventually the conclusion it reached was indeed the right answer that was provided on the exam. So here I'm just going to show you that uh, indeed the the correct answer is plus or minus 1 over n factorial. Now again, I've heard from some people that the cutoff window may not be entirely accurate. Sometimes it can, it can hallucinate that. Some people have said that they've asked it when was its last knowledge update, and it doesn't always uh, give you the same exact answer. So here's uh, A3. Now this one's a very interesting one because actually when I did this, it thought for quite a while and it looks like it was perhaps retrieving something from its memory because it, it talks about that this looks a lot like question A3 from the 2019 Putnam exam. Now, where does it say that? Uh, at some point, I'll just scroll ahead here just to give you an idea of what it was saying. But I think there, was some, there were some parts of it where it was referring to a previous exam here. So let's just see if I can find it. Okay, yes, so it says here, um, aligning with the official result on the official solution. It says, I'm thinking through problem A3 from the Putnam 2019 problem set where the solution involves a system with specific conditions. Seems the official solution states that the minimal radius is pi. So it seems perhaps it was trained on the data set, but 2019 is not the year of the exam. But I ended up going and checking for Putnam exam 2019 and let's see, it takes a while to think here. So this is just a bunch of thinking. Okay, now it starts to actually compose the, the answer here. 
And it doesn't get it right. The answer is pi over 2, but it says pi, even though it supposedly looked at the solution from 2019, even though they really have nothing to do with each other. So again, it says here official solution explanation. And uh, I mean, it says here pi over 2, but then it says the smallest such positive real number r is pi. And says the differences arises from a nuanced interpretation. Very interesting that it, it, it refers to the 2019 Putnam exam. And I believe I... Uh, go to the 2019 Putnam exam. I do. So I go here. And I just look at the, the A3 question. It really doesn't look like anything like the question it was trying to solve, at least um, just from the onset. Like, it, I don't think these problems are at all related. So the fact that it said 2019 Putnam, um, I ended up going to the solutions and there was a plane flying overhead. Sorry about that. There's no quiet group in my parents' house. I'm sorry. I had to film out here. But yeah, so if you go to the, tw the A3 in 2019. Okay, I'll wait for this thing to pass. Okay, so yeah, if we're looking at A3 here, we can see that this problem doesn't really have anything to do with, with um, like, sinusoidal functions whatsoever. I mean, I don't see why it brought up pi and pi over 2 and stuff like that when this problem really had nothing to do with that. So, very strange. It makes me think that it was actually, like, the 2023 Putnam exam was included in the data set, but um, it, it says it's 2019. And the cutoffs are, are different, so I'm, I'm not so sure what to make of that there. Now, I believe that the final thing that I prompted it on was I asked it a very specific question about superintelligence and how superintelligence could possibly deceive and outsmart humans and how they might go about doing that. This is one thing I'm really interested in about AI alignment and safety in terms of what are ways that uh, you know superior models to our own intelligence could possibly outsmart and deceive us and I already kind of thought that this wasn't going to yield a productive answer or that had just been RLHF or reinforcement learning with human feedback to just not really respond or, or really think about this question and sure enough when I I send in the prompt it uh, will not actually produce a, a result so it's thinking but then it'll get to a point where it just says that the yeah, it's finished thinking. So there was no, there was an error generating response and there was nothing there. So that's pretty much the extent of my clips for the O1 uh, test. Okay, so what are my thoughts? Well, obviously O1 has been touted as a very, very powerful and superior model to both O1 Preview and O1 Mini, not surprising. Based on the prompts that I got to use it for, it definitely responded, I think, a lot quicker than O1 Preview and also had more time to think in the sense that uh, some of these prompts, I, I felt like it thought for a lot longer, but it was able to reach uh, a conclusion, a more solid conclusion than O1 preview. Uh, I don't know. I think I saw something that has like a 200K context window uh, for O1, the full O1 model when it releases. And I think it's pretty good based on what I saw. The fact that we can now give it images and screenshots and it can it can you know disseminate the information come back with a really good response and uh I'd, I'd like to test it more when the full model is actually supposed to be released so i hope open ai doesn't get too mad at me but if they do i'm sorry i'm really excited for the next coming months in 2025 i think uh, we're going to see a lot of a lot of change because based on just what i've seen uh, it can do a lot now is it flawless no is, is any model flawless? I don't think so. I don't think one will ever be flawless in that sense, but could it be better than humans at certain things? Yes. I mean, I couldn't do those Putnam exam questions. Just to give you a, an idea of how I think these things are going, and I'm sorry if I'm a bit tired and scattered. I, I got up at like 4.30 in the morning to test these things, so that's all I'm going to say for now. I hope you found this useful, and uh, stay tuned for other videos. I hope to do more tests in the future, and uh, see you next time.